Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today is one of the best shutdown cornerbacks in the NFL. Last year, he intercepted my favorite quarterback, Tom Brady, not once, but twice in the same game, and I still haven't forgiven him for that. Miami Dolphins cornerback, Xavier Howard. So I'm going to forgive you for a second oh, wow. for intercepting Tom Brady. That's pretty awesome achievement that you had there. Does it mean more when you intercept a great quarterback like Tom Brady or are all interceptions equal? No, Tom Brady, that's a different ball you catch right there. <laughs> Tom Brady, man, his history. Um, really just as a kid, just seeing him play, then playing against him, interception, that was big. Now you're one of the best cornerbacks in the league, but it wasn't easy getting to that point. You grew up in Houston's Fifth Ward. What was your childhood like there? Um, growing up in Fifth Ward, um, it was tough. Um, just as a kid, um, all of the stuff that I seen growing up. And um, I tried to be focused and just try to play sports to get my mind off of what's going on. So that was my main thing, just coming out of Fifth Ward, just trying to do something positive where I was at and um, just setting, setting the goals different for the, um, the kids that's growing up in there now because um, Everywhere you went, there was a lot of negative stuff going on. So by me doing some positive, me and a former um, player that went to high school with me, William Jackson, he with the Cincinnati Bengals, um, we both was focused on um, be, um, playing sports, knowing to get us out the hood. You're one of seven kids. Yes. So your mom had a had a big job on her hands with all right. of you guys. Was it hard for her to shield you from what was going on in your neighborhood? Yes, it was. It was hard. Um, you know, with seven kids, it was five boys and two girls. So the boys, um, I have a little brother now that's um, that's in, um, was at the same high school I went to. So there's a lot of stuff that he sees now that I tell him that I seen when I was younger, when I was growing up. So I'm trying to keep my hands on him right now because he, he going through a lot right now. So um, having a big family, um, I think that was a great thing for me, um, just really being around my brothers and sisters and just really playing, competing, doing a lot of stuff together. So that was big for me. and. Um, my mom, she did the best she can do uh, with um, seven kids. Um, she took care of us, we got everything we wanted. And um, just seeing her working, that's what really pushed me and push, pushing my little brothers right now. So you're talking about protecting your brother from seeing some of the things that you had to see. And one of those big things was you're right in front of your house and you see something happen that changed your life right. forever. Right. What was that? Um, seeing a guy get um, shot on a, on a railroad track. Um, me just being out there playing sports, playing basketball in front of the house. With, um, by, I was by myself, just out there shooting around, and uh, I seen a guy um, walking to the railroad track, like the railroad track, like right here by my house. So I just seen a guy following the guy. So when he followed him, when they got on, like a, it was like a little ditch they went through, went down, and came up to the railroad track. And the guy was walking down, and I just seen the guy pull his gun out and shot him. And then when he hit the ground. He, the guy ran back my way. It was a corner store. He, he was passing by the, the houses right now, by the houses. And he was like, hey, go inside. They shooting. Meanwhile, I'm the like. The guy who sh was yes. doing the shooting told you, go inside. They're shooting. Yes. I'm like, bro, I just seen you shoot dude, and you're going to tell me go in the house. And I was so scared because I thought he going to try to do something to me. So soon he left. I ran in the house, um, ran next door where my mom was at because they, they ain't even here. And um, told him what had happened when I had seen him. So he told you to go in the house maybe, and you're thinking he might come after you because you're a witness, yes. right? So what did you do then to have to protect yourself? I ended up uh, moving uh, with my grandmother. I stayed with her for probably like two or three months to get away and um, to get that off my mind. Well, it's, it's still, I still see it a little bit, but um, not as much when I was younger, being traumatized by seeing that. and. Um, you know, um, you stuff you can't control, it happened everywhere. It happened anywhere, so people getting killed and stuff like that. But just seeing it, witnessing it, and seeing it in front of me, it was just it was just crazy. Did you know the guy? I didn't. So eventually the guy who, who committed the murder, he was caught, so you were able to go home at that yeah. point, but you're still living with all right. the trauma of seeing that. How do you get through it? Um, I try to focus on, I just try to keep my mind on something else, my family, football, sports. And um, that's, that's really that's how I go about it. Um, when I hear gunshots now, I'll be like, what, who getting shot or what's going on? You still hear gunshots? Yes. How do you still hear gunshots? Um, back in Houston, when I go back, 
Yeah, you, you still here. <laughs> so when you go back, you said your brother is at the same high school you the were same at. Same high school. So do you go back to that same town where you grew up? Yeah. Fifth Ward? Yeah, I have um, families there in Fifth Ward, but my mother and stay like, I say like 30, 40 minutes from Fifth Ward. But my brother go to school out there in Houston. Because you are who you are now, are you nervous to go back there? Oh, no, no, no. no. Um, I like going back there. Um, it motivates me. Um, it gives me back, get, uh, memories back and just really just being proud of where I come up from and really just seeing what goes on, what's going on around there. It really just motivates me. Like, if you don't do your job, what you're doing now, you'll be back here. So you, you wind up getting out yourself and you're going to Baylor to play football and then something else awful happens with your family. You're super close with your sister, and then she gets involved in an incident. Can you tell me about that? Um, I think it was my, probably my sophomore year. Uh, my sister, um, she was in a um, high-speed chase. They was um, stealing from the mall, hunting a couple of friends. And um, they end up, got in the car, it was on a high-speed chase. And it was a Deerbrook Mall police officer. They Followed them all the way to Houston. It was like probably like 30, 40 minute drive on the highway. And soon they exit where, we, where, they, was, where they was going in Fifth Ward. Um, the driver, well, the, the girls all was in the car. They ended up running the light. And there was a lady and two little boys that was going across. They had, they, my sister was at a red light and they, they hit it. They killed the lady. Um, I guess, the, uh, I think the, the kid was in a critical condition. He ended up living, both of them. But the older lady had died. She passed away. Yes. So this is your sister who you're really close to, and she right. winds up getting sentenced to 37 years yes. in jail. Do you remember the moment when you heard that? Yeah, because um, it was like nothing I can do. And I think it was, it was during my process, I ended up, I think she was in and out, probably like a year or so, going on two. And I was training for the draft. Uh, I was in Naples, Florida, and um, that's when my mom and dad told me what was going on. My sister, she used to always call me and let me know what, what was going on. So they ended up doing that, and um, when they sentenced her, it was just like nothing we can do. It was just crazy, and it was crazy because she wasn't even driving a car, but she got sentenced 37 years. What does that feel like to you? Oh, uh, man, I couldn't do nothing but cry, man, because my oldest sister, um, she, 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 she had went to college on um, Western Texas out there in um, Amarillo, and she played softball, had a, a, a softball scholarship, um, ended up getting pregnant, came back, and all of everything else started happening. Um, I say just the wrong crowd she was with, um, but you see stuff like that, like that stuff, like the stuff they was doing, that, like that was normal, like that's what people was doing to make a living. You turned this around though, you, you somehow got something positive out of everything that had happened. You decided this would be the time now for you to go into the draft, although some said maybe you should stay. Right. But you felt like it was your responsibility now to take care of the family and even you said that your sister was pregnant, so now her son, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up um, leaving. I have a daughter myself. I had a daughter, a daughter in college um, my junior year. And um, I feel like that was the best thing for me because um, I was going to my senior year. I had a two um, great season at Baylor, and I feel like it's time to take my talents to the NFL. So um, when that had happened, um, you know, I was getting a lot of feedback. Um, stay in school. Um, you got a fifth round grade, um, and all that. What was ultimately the thing that happened that had you make the decision? I'm not listening to these people. I'm going. Um, really just sticking to my gut feeling. I was like, man, I, I did. I've been doing good these two years. Um, I can get better, but um, it was a great opportunity um, to get even um, the mention of saying and going to the NFL. Just, just a guy coming from Fifth Ward, making it to college. And, um, I ain't graduate, but I'm um, in class right now, but um, on a, on the rise to graduate. So um, it was big for me and really just had that opportunity to say I, I got drafted.